Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where I talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Evil, Season 4, Episode 8. Great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Cheryl... I wasn't expecting Cheryl to make the move she made this episode, but to be fair, she's been going like anti-Leland ever since she found out, yo, you tried to have my son-in-law kill one of my grandchildren, and that's a big no-no, so she's been going full scorched earth, so now the plan is she confesses everything to David, it's like, well, it's more like a discussion than a confession, but I thought it was so interesting, because for her, she doesn't believe any of this, she thinks the church is BS, a lot of things that Kristen believes, obviously her mom does too, but she's a lot more uh, vocal about her, I mean, Kristen is too, but she says that she's just like, oh, I know what you guys do, kids, and just all the terrible institution, the patriarchy of like how the church operates. So she doesn't believe in it, but she believes this is a way to protect her family. Cause it's like, yeah, you need to keep an eye on Alexis because it's like, oh, cause she's like Leland kind of feels like she's like the antichrist version of John Baptist or whatever. And it's like, well, who's the actual antichrist? It's like, uh, my, uh, grandchild, my grandson, Timothy, who is Leland and Kristen's kid. So and David's trying to process all this because he it went from zero to 60 because he was aware of the Antichrist, but all that had kind of fallen away from his purview to some extent. And now here is Cheryl, who was the most unexpected person for him to see like drop by the church. But she chose here because it's the one place Leland is afraid of and he'd never come in here. And it's like, right, I need you to baptize um, Timothy, which I was like, would baptizing the Antichrist really be that simple, like just putting a, a real wrinkle in their plans? But it seems like, jumping ahead a little bit, does seem like it is. I mean, granted, there was like some complications, storm, water, randomly freezing, blackouts. It's like, yeah, it seemed like there was some like satanic, like, we're not going to let this happen, do everything we can to stop you. But for the most part, it's like, was a baptism all it really took to beat the Antichrist? I, I don't know. I just thought that was fascinating. I was so curious to see what was going to happen if it was up to David. David, but funny enough, it really wasn't. I mean, that's the beauty of this episode. Like everything is connected, even though you kind of think it isn't, because David's got his whole thing with he's got, working with Father Dominic on. There's something he's supposed to be remote viewing, but it's like, oh no, it's seems like it's his remote viewing, which we'll talk about later, seems like it's unrelated, but ultimately it ends up being super related. It's like a floor below what Father Dominic wanted him to look at. Because Father Dominic never told him specifically what he was looking at, just that it was going to say, it, 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 well, no, he actually did. He did say it was about the evil that's coming to New York. But him and David didn't really communicate because if David had communicated what this was all about, it's like, oh, Cheryl came to him in confidence. So as a priest, he isn't really supposed to share that with anyone. I've never actually thought about that, but I assume like, right, priests aren't supposed to share your confessions with anyone, even other priests and stuff like that. Even if it's about literally baptizing the Antichrist. I mean, can't really bring it up to Kristen because it's like, well, she's... Not going to believe this because everything that um, Cheryl said was true. Kristen wouldn't believe it. And especially if it came out of Cheryl's mouth. But also, David knows that Kristen's definitely taken a step back in more of the, let's look at this more logically. She's always been that, but she's taken that step even further now because of everything. So she's kind of wanted to kind of back away from like believing in all this. So she wouldn't believe all this. I don't know if she's actually told Ben or David her interactions with her child. I don't. I think she probably kept that to herself. So it's not like she hasn't had any interaction with the Antichrist, but she would never believe that their child is the Antichrist, regardless of like, yes, it is Leland's kid and his delusions believe it to be the Antichrist. And he's got my mom believing these delusions. But yeah, Kristen would never actually believe it. But either way, circling over to... Continuing down that route. Um, I think it's so interesting because we haven't really seen the surrogate mother since she gave birth. That's the last episode we saw her in. So it seemed like her and Cheryl are on good enough terms that Cheryl and like she's able to like work with Cheryl and Cheryl told her like, oh, what I'm planning to do. And I'm like, oh, the fact that she goes along with it. I mean, she was never really she was well, she was down for it to some extent. But I think it's also like she's with Cheryl about trying to take down a patriarchy and just like like run things rampant at that company. 
maybe. I don't know. Because Cheryl's also accepted, if I die, most likely uh, Leland murdered me. So it's like, well, he did what he did. I tried to murder him. So he's most likely going to try and murder me again. So, but like, so she, Cheryl probably has no interest in any of that. Trying to take over that stuff because she's burning, trying to burn it to the ground with Leland. So I don't know where the uh, surrogate mother stands in all this. Whether like she's going to fill Cheryl's role there of like, right, Cheryl's doing what she's doing and that benefits me by putting me in a more powerful position to try and run this thing into the ground. Or now having given birth to the Antichrist, she's just kind of like, hey, I'm done with all of this. So she's even more on board with helping Cheryl burn it to the ground. I have no idea. Because we've never circled back to the whole... Right, she gathered up the women in the office to try and like bring, like try and usurp everything. So I guess that's no longer like their like goal. This is maybe I don't like I said. There's a lot we didn't really get in context, but either way, she's my my point of going in this whole diatribe was just how for whatever reason she's supporting Cheryl in what she's doing. So. David's busy with what he's doing this episode. Like I said, we'll circle back to that. So Cheryl has to go to Father Ignatius. He was kind of like, no, 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 David could do it for you. But it's like, nope, you got to do it. Shows up at the church. Sister Andrea's there. And it's like, no, 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 no. I need your help. This baby, it's the Antichrist. Which, obviously, when uh, Sister Agnes looks, she sees Timothy for what he really is. All demon baby and stuff like that. That doesn't look like that was... That looked like that was a puppet. Maybe it was CGI, but it looked like it was just like they literally made like a puppet, a demon uh, antichrist puppet for this. So it's a whole like baptism. She had to get uh, rainwater and had to have it blessed. And then they had to have the baptism over like a, um, over a uh, rainwater bucket. Well, it was a mop bucket filled with rainwater. So all the signs are happening. Uh, the, like I said, the water froze, the door's being blown open by the wind, the light's going out, and it all works out. And when we look at baby Timothy, well, at least when Sister Andrea looks at baby Timothy, looks like a normal baby. So Cheryl, which I love that during that, uh, uh, Father Ignatius is kind of like, do you believe in the Lord? Yada, 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 all this religious stuff. And she's just kind of like, yes. Yes, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yes, 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 yes. Even though she doesn't really mean it. We already know how she feels about the church because she brought it up at the beginning of the episode. So um, I even love the whole thing of like, oh, what's the baby's name? Oh, Timothy. What's his christening name? It's like, well, he doesn't have one. What's yours? And Ignatius is like, Francis? And she's like, well, there you go. And he's like, okay, Timothy Francis. I, was, I just love that whole sequence. Cheryl was so happy. She's like, she was pretty much like, hey, why don't we take a photo to commemorate this? Also, can't you give me the uh, certificate? Which I, I don't, i pretty sure I've never been baptized. I don't know. Maybe I have been and I just don't remember. Probably, I mean, obviously I was super young if you're going to do that. I mean, you can get baptized later in life. At least I've never been baptized later in life. So I don't, I don't think I was ever baptized. I don't even know if that's the same denomination of what my family would believe, have believed at the time. Whatever the case, moot point. I just I, my point for bringing that up is like I never knew you got a certificate for being baptized. I was like, oh, I don't. I never seen that really referenced in anything before where baptisms have come up. But you know, maybe it has come up before and stuff, and I just never paid attention to it. Either way, how does Cheryl do this? She took the photo and the certificate and nailed it to Leland's door. So later on, he picks up Timothy and he's kind of like shitting himself when he finds out. Even to the point he considered smothering Timothy. It's like, well, it might not be the Antichrist anymore. What is he now? I don't know. Maybe just a regular baby. But it's like, well, you can't really kill the baby without... Well, for one, that'd be super fucked up. Granted, we're talking about evil people. So, like, you can't, you know, it shouldn't be that, you know, surprising. But it's like, yeah, you'd have to answer to the manager and all your higher-ups about why you did what you did. So... He's going to fake it till he makes it. He tries to burn the certificate in the photo. No, tries. He does. So I guess almost like, oh, if I do this, we'll just pretend like it never happened. I'm like, but it did. Burning the photo and the certificate doesn't erase the baptism and got, like, it seems like he's just a regular baby now. But, uh, yeah. So I'm going to pause things there, circle over to the other side of the episode, and then come back where it all kind of ultimately ends up connecting. So. David's remote viewing, 
uh, involves him seeing a guy named Tyler, played by uh, Sean Patrick Thomas. I was like, hey! The most recent thing I saw him in was Gin V. So I was like, oh, it's just kind of... Ex- I wasn't expecting to see him in this. I don't know. It's just, it's just like, oh, you see certain actors, like, oh, man, catches you off guard. But I was like, hey, Sean Patrick Thomas, that's dope. But, uh, yeah, uh, that whole storyline is so dark, and especially to kind of be getting that section of... I mean, it's part of the code opening. Of, before we even got the title card, it's like, yeah, man's trying to kill himself. No, wait, he stops himself. David's kind of happy, though. Okay, good. And then you see he's loading more bullets. You're like, fuck! He's planning to kill his wife, his kids, and himself because he says, like, right, he wants them to all be together because they already lost their son. They lost a seven-year-old to, like, an accident. It's just like, oh, God, this is so F. This is so dark. And David doesn't know what to do about it, you know, other than trying to, like, like beseech the guide to tell him to stop. I mean, David does have some, like, pull with his remote viewing. We've seen it in the past where he's kind of, like... I mean, I don't know if he intentionally had that uh, warlord kill himself, but at least, like, he kind of had some pull over the warlord trying to stop him from killing that priest, and he did, but that change of heart ended up making him kill himself. And Obviously, that wasn't David's intention, but I, I... we we don't know enough about what David's capable of and like whether he's in full control of certain things or whether it's just a byproduct of when you switch someone's mind like that, it just has uh, domino effects that you aren't quite sure what they're going to be. So I don't know whether or not like, I mean, it does seem like David was able to kind of like almost like push him to not go through with it. Because he, he can kind of feel David's presence later on when David is using the remote viewing. So it's kind of like there is something there like David can kind of push him a little to go his way. But it's not 100% clear. But it feels like that's the case. Um, it is an interesting parallel that this guy's birthday is the same day as David's. I don't know if it's also his 40th birthday. But this all plays into what Ben and Kristen think like. Oh, you're seeing a guy with two children and, and happy life. Like You're thinking about the possibilities of what your life could have been. I mean, it is interesting that just as he's celebrating his birthday at the same time this is all happening, Kristen and Ben show up to help celebrate uh, David. So, I even love like, oh yeah, who made this red section of the cake? Oh, Lexus did. Her favorite color was red lately. He's like, huh, uh, how, how are the kids? It's like, they're good. Uh, also, he called Andy Andrew. I was like, for a second, I was like, who the fuck is Andrew? I was like, oh, have we ever called Andy by his full name? Of course, it'd be like, of course, Andy's short for Andrew, but it kind of caught me on guard. I was like, I was like, wow. I was like, because he's always been Andy the entire episode. So I never, I think, I, like, for whatever reason, I know on some level that Andy's a nickname for Andrew, but in my head, I just, I treat Andy just like its own name. Like, I don't treat it like a nickname. Like, if someone was going by the name Harry, I was like, oh, I never think, oh, their name might be Harold. I just think, like, no, their name's Harry. It, it's at, I, it's a tangent, but still, like, just letting you know my thought process. So, that's as far as David really goes on that front. But he's got to take a lot of what Cheryl said to heart. So, it's like, what are you going to do going forward with, like, what you know from her? Like, especially about the Lexus stuff. You're going to be probably taking more of a keen interest in Lexus and how you're going to do that without Kristen knowing. Like, there, there's a lot to that. So, that's all we got in this front. But I'm curious to see how he handles that going forward. But like I said, everyone kind of thinks David's just kind of, you know, getting stuff mixed up in his own head. Especially because there's the whole AOL of it all, the whole element of... Basically, your mind is so filled with other thoughts that they start polluting your remote viewing. Like, early on, his remote viewing was uh, polluted with uh, Kristen uh, being naked, or at least, like, in her bathroom about to take a bath or something. I was, like, oh. I was like, wait, are you actually remote viewing that right now? It doesn't seem like that's the case. It's just his mind manifested that in his head. It's like, well, you weren't really thinking about, well, I mean, you were thinking about Kristen uh, but not in that capacity, so that was interesting that that's how it manifested itself, but maybe that's also supposed to be indicative of, well, there's always some part of your brain, maybe even subconsciously thinking of Kristen in that way. I mean, you did have the whole, like, sex demon thing that pretends to be Kristen, like, constantly. Well, you haven't seen it in a couple episodes, but it, even it's popped up this season, so maybe that kind of plays into that a little bit. 
But every step David took this episode, uh, trying to prove that Tyler was real and it wasn't just in his head, didn't turn out right. So, because they he saw the uh, angel with the lamb photo, and so they went to Adina, but she's like, I never sold that to anybody. So why would Tyler have it? But it turns out it's another thing of, oh, David, it's it's his mind adding stuff to the remote viewing that isn't actually there. So I, I love that actual process he worked with uh, Ben and um, Kristen to like, right, I'll say something out loud. You tell me whether or not it's something related to me. That way I know that it's not part of the remote viewing and it'll disappear, which it worked. But it took, like one particular book on uh, his shelf was something that Kristen recognized because apparently Kurt gives this to people, which almost almost fucking forgot. Since oh, and Kurt really quickly, Cheryl, oh Cheryl, 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 uh, got Robin fired because Cheryl reported, I guess, to Kurt about what she was doing. So he's got a new secretary. I was like, oh, dude, that's so... And then even even uh, uh, Leland being like, Cheryl, you... You it called her a bitch. I forgot. He said something else. You sly something. Something like that. I forgot. But I was like, oh, good on... Once again, uh, Cheryl doing everything she can to burn these bridges. Um, but either way, it turned... I thought that was interesting because... David did try to look up Tyler and the accident, but nothing came up. I wonder why. I guess it maybe never made big enough local news that I guess it might have been such a small, intimate thing that it never got publicized. Because, like, why couldn't David find anything while he was Googling? Like I said. Um, but it turned out the reason why... Kurt, I mean, Kurt was like, ah, patient confidentiality, can't say anything... But it turns out his patient isn't Tyler, it's Tyler's wife. And in a moment he mentioned she mentioned Tyler. He's like, whoa, whoa, your husband's name is Tyler. So they went to Kurt's office, followed her home, very stalkerish. But also uh, David uh, put on a fake collar and everything. Like, whoa, 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 has that always been in the glove compartment? He's like, yeah. He's like, you have no idea when you might need it. They're like, what? To like avoid a speeding ticket? And David kind of has this look like, and doesn't say anything. So I'm like, is that what you use it for? That seems kind of fucked, David. But maybe he was just kind of like, no. Why would I? What? That's Maybe he's like, no, that'd be a fucked thing to do about it. But I'm also like, for you to have that? Like, I need to be a priest really quickly. It just feels kind of, kind of, kind of fucked. So it seems a little sussy. So I, I get the feeling like there probably is truth to like Ben calling him out. Being like, is that what you use that for? Probably is. But luckily, uh, I, they were able to kind of get their way into Tyler's house by being like, yeah, we're a part of this school that your son's trying to get your kid, that private school your son, your father, your husband's trying to get your uh, kids into. And oh, Kristen, she's a mom of four who has her kids attending and Ben's a teacher. He's like, yeah, I love teaching and I love science. <laughs> uh, but yeah. The the uh, conversation between David and and Tyler, it's like, I mean, he's able. To, it also once again, I'm not a religious person, but from a certain perspective, you kind of feel like oh, it's kind of fucked that David's like, oh, the person that was it was God. God was watching you, and he sent me and stuff like that. It's like, well, I guess the argument could be God gave you this gift. It is gift God's gift that allows you to do this. So. It was pretty much God showing you the way, kind of showing you what needed to be done and um, showing you what you needed to, uh, you know, who you're supposed to be saving today. So it all worked out. So, but I, I think from a certain perspective, him making it seem like it's all God seemed effed up because it was him. So it almost feels like you're impersonating God a little bit, but then I'm like, well, once again, it's God's gift. So really it, that's supposed to be the point of it. It's like, no, God, God showed me what you know and he saw what you were going through and it's like so i guess david looks at it more like a it's not me it's more like god is viewing and then i'm kind of being able to kind of tap into the signal and see as well that's kind of i'm sure how he looks at it but luckily was able to save tyler's life and just it's like right you come with me we'll get you the help you need 
does seem like, you know, I didn't even think about it at the time, but it's like, well, Andy was not, not to the same extent, but Andy was kind of being manipulated into doing the same thing. The fact is, we find out that Tyler and his family live in the same building as Leland. In fact, they live one floor underneath Leland, directly under Leland's um, apartment. So, maybe there's something to that, considering, well, different circumstances, but Leland was trying to get Andy to kill his youngest. So, can't help but draw parallels in that regard. So, And like I was saying, the... Um, Remote viewing that Dominic had him really initially looking into was related to this. Because he's supposed to be saving a life, but it's like, well, he did save a life. No, I keep forgetting. I keep conflating. He's trying... David's trying to save a life. Dominic wants to stop the, everything related to, like, this great evil. So, I don't know what David's going to take away from this. Considering, like, right, we, the, it all... Like, he's not going to correlate... Because uh, the three items he saw were immediately shown to be in Leland's place when, like, the manager and stuff like that. Because, I mean, things literally crossed because uh, Tyler, when he was coming up to go to his apartment, all the managers and all the people that are heading to Leland's apartment are right behind him. So it's like both storylines cross because it's all intermingled and it's all connected, so... We see them kind of doing their ritualistic thing, bleeding around the baby, cutting their hands. And then the manager unveils something, but we don't get to see it. But yeah, we saw a little bit of a red light, so I don't know if it's supposed to be like a portal to hell. Or, you know, maybe we got uh, Satan video calling in or something like that. I have no idea what to make of it. So, And I don't know if David will bring any of this up to Dominic and whether he'll correlate anything. Like, even if David had done what Dominic wanted, but like, what would have what would have been the outcome? Like, would the the entity have intervened or something? What would you have done? Would you have tried to stop it before it even came to that? It's like, because David was focused on saving Tyler, you missed an important thing that you were supposed to check out, but maybe all that was having an influence on Tyler's family. I, I Or maybe that was just kind of like, hey, Tyler's thing was just so close enough to what was going down because it's literally like the signals got crossed because it's literally the uh same rooms just like a floor apart you know so um, don't know what to fully make of that it's going to be interesting to see where things kind of go forward from there uh where is cheryl now after everything did she go into hiding is she still about burning bridges and trying to destroy leland and kill leland or i mean she made sure that david knows so david does know so if anything does happen to her, she'll, like, he'll know the truth. And will he end up telling Kristen the truth at some point in time? Considering, like, Cheryl probably won't. There's also this line I thought was interesting when the whole, like, oh, is David, is all this inside of David's head? Turns out it's not, considering how it all works out. We never really get that perspective on things. But it's kind of like, well, we kind of have to accept the weird stuff that just somehow magically ends up working out. It's like, logically, you can't explain how David talks about someone he's never met before. You know, so maybe maybe they get to something about that eventually. Maybe there'd be a conversation about how you... I just think it's interesting that that never came up for Kristen and uh, Ben. Early enough in the episode, sure, but when we actually got to the Tyler stuff... Like, when they're actually, like, Tyler and his wife in real life, it's like, we don't ever have that conversation. Could be a conversation in a future episode, I don't know. But either way, my point for bringing that up is, at one point, Ben says, like, we're all entitled to our wild goose, goose chase, and this happens to be David's. And Kristen's like, oh, that's very philosophical of you. He's like, you don't know the half of it. I guess because of everything that's kind of been going on with that other... Ben, the whole particle accelerator thing going through him. Like, I guess that's kind of changed his perspective on a lot of stuff. Like, the whole... I, I don't know. that That's that's my takeaway from it. Like, the whole him and... Was it him and Renee uh, situation? Like, wasn't that last episode, I believe? How that kind of 
fell apart. So I'm sure that was a major influence in his perspective on this. Uh, just thought that was kind of an interesting tidbit that feels like that could be a large, larger, a small part in the episode, but maybe a larger, significant aspect of Ben's arc in this season. So, like I said, we'll have to wait to see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good bye.